Hello YouTube, Army Talks Prison here, um, if you like prison content, subscribe, share, like, I got kind of a funny story today, and uh, I was reminded of this by a subscriber, I can't remember if it was Jamie or Janice, one of those reminded me of this story, I've told you about Robert Schneider, and so any of this is repetitive, uh, then uh, I apologize. But this part of it, I'm having trouble even uh, doing this because it's, I'm laughing as I'm thinking about it. Robert, I'm going to try to do this in a way that's polite. He had bad gas. And when I say bad gas, he had real bad gas. You guys know that uh, he saved up for his TV. So that meant he ate a lot in the chow hall. And the chow hall food will mess you up. Uh, a lot of you will. But, you know, he saved up each uh, month from what he made for his... Uh, TV. I think he was the one who was from Iberia, one of the videos I was talking about earlier. But, and I helped him, you know, a little bit. You know, I'd give him coffee and stuff, you know, and he, plus he hustled, he uh, made these cards. And so I'd go out and tell people, hey, you know, buy some of your cards, just help him out, you know. And, uh, but anyway, he had bad gas. In fact, it's one of the reasons I, I never kept, you know, I moved out of the cell, you know. I actually went through the hole, um, and when I came back out, I never tried to move back in with him because, I mean, he peeled paint. It was so bad. But anyway, like there's one instance when he was, uh, he was in there watching TV, and of course, he hadn't gotten his TV yet. So he's watching mine, so I'd have the headphones off. You know, and guards, they really don't mind you having the headphones off. They don't enforce that rule, even though you're supposed to have the headphones on, as long as it's not real loud. But there was a bunch of people outside our cell in a group yelling and talking. Robert goes over there, he, he tells me, I'm going to give him some of this gas. So he goes over there and he sits down by the floor and lets one go and then the guys outside start blaming each other and stuff and they disappeared. But you know, I told Robert he needs to go to medical about this, you know, that this was an issue. And he did go to medical. And, you know, they gave him some pills and stuff for it. But I mean I, I truly believe there was something bad, wrong. You know, whether he was eating chow hall food or not, this was bad. There's a lot of people that eat chow hall food, and they have gas, but it's not that bad. One day, we're coming back from chow, and uh, we uh, get down towards the housing unit, there was an officer fuel. They say fuel, but it looks like it's fuel well to me. He had some sons that worked there too. And I think one of them was already a sergeant. But he was just a CO, correctional officer. <laughs> yeah, he says, Snyder, come here. He's calling Robert. Let me pat you down. So as he's patting him down, you know, as he's going down the leg, he has to kind of bend over a little bit. And Robert let one go. That CO was mad, and I can't say I blame him. But anyway, 
he starts yelling at him and stuff and saying he's going to write him up. You know, what are you going to write him up for? You know, a bunch of people was laughing, you know, and he said, what are you going to write him up for? He goes, for gassing me. Anyway, we go back into the cell and I said, man, you did that on purpose, didn't you? He goes, no, I, I, did, I didn't do it on purpose. I swear I did. I to this day think he moved on on purpose. I mean, you couldn't hold it for a few more seconds until he was done. And uh, so, next thing we know, our door is being popped, you know, and in walk, walks uh, Officer Fuel. And he tells uh, Robert, he says, next time you do that, I'm going to come up here to the cell. Because by that time, we'd move from the bottom walk to the top walk. They actually switched us. Because uh, people on the top walk needed the bottom walk for some reason, whether they own a handicap or something. Because I'm going to come up here, I'm going to come in the cell. Side hill is going to leave. And I'm going to beat you down. And uh, he said some other kind of derogatory things that if I was Robert, you know, I'm not sure if I could have took it. But anyway, so he leaves. So I asked Robert, I said, so uh, if you do that again, he comes in here and, you know, fight him. He goes, well, he's going to, so he's going to beat me down, he says, um, I'll just let him do it and then sue him, you know, he goes, because if I fight against him, then he's going to say, I started it, you know, and, and he'll win, and that's the story of Robert, another quick story, um, about an officer that, uh, decided he was going to go to, uh, I don't know if he decided or if he had to or what. But it came out that he was going to work in Vandalia, the women's prison. And uh, so people started, you know, making jokes. Oh, you're going up there just because of the women, this and that, you know. And uh, so he leaves. And he's gone for a while. It doesn't seem like he was gone very long, but it's probably longer than he thought. Because, you know, when people, whether it's prisoners or, uh, uh, you know, people incarcerated or his staff, when they leave, you know, get transferred and they come back, it doesn't seem like it's very long. You know, and you tend to put them out of the, you forget about them. You don't think about them no more. And that's, it's, it's Somebody gets out of prison or gets transferred, and it's uh, somebody that you're really, really cool with. Uh, you don't think about them. It wasn't long. It doesn't seem like it was long. He was back. And what he said surprised me. He came by one day and he said, uh, so I don't need to shake your cell down. I said, okay. And usually, he was a cool guard. And usually cool guards don't tear your cell up. They just go in there and they look around a little bit and they walk out. So he goes in there. I'm standing outside the cell. Me and my cell yard. My cell yard came up from playing space. He's waiting to go back in. I said, hey, man, what happened to you uh, working in Vandalia? If you don't mind me asking. And... <laughs> I usually don't engage with them like that, you know, but I was curious. And uh, he said, uh, the women's prison is nastier than the men. And I said, what? He goes, you guys are cleaner than the women. And, uh, that just kind of blew me away. But anyway, that's just like a little extra that I wanted to throw in there about. Because to me, it's hard to believe. You think the women would be really clean and, and 
keep their, not only their hygiene, but their their living quarters, the area uh, clean. But according to him, that's not true. At least not in Vandalia. Um, there's only two women's prisons in Missouri, uh, Chillicothe and Vandalia. But Chillicothe might be different, you know, but this is what he was saying about Vandalia. So anybody out there uh, wants to comment and say, oh, that's not true or whatever, it may not be true. I'm just going by what he said. All right. Thank you for watching. And I uh, hope you guys got a little laugh out of this. I know it wasn't a message. It wasn't really educational, but hopefully it entertained you. Thank you. We'll catch you next time. Bye.